What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And today we are continuing or finishing this crazy SAT, uh, excuse me, ACT prep week. And we're finishing with these formulas, which if you guys do follow me on Instagram, I just posted all these, oops. I just posted all these formulas on my, uh, on my Instagram page. So you can check that out uh, if you wanna kind of have a condensed version of it. Now this is gonna be really cool because not only am I get, I'm gonna go through these formulas, but I'm gonna leave the chat window open right here. So make sure <coughs> to you know, uh, include questions if you have them or comments or things like that. And I'll try my best to answer on the fly. Hey, what's up Baki? And uh, yeah, and, and uh, I think this is for you, a lot of you guys who are taking the ACT tomorrow. Make sure to stay safe, stay healthy, and I wish you all the best of luck when you do so. And for some of you, I think maybe you're taking it still, it's a, it's a month away. So if that's the case, you're just prepping a little early. Uh, I did some ACT videos leading up to this week, and so that's it. What's up, HMAX? What's up, Quang? You're back. All right. So here we go. We're going to step through these formulas and... <coughs> These are really important formulas. Now, obviously, when I'm making this list, I'm not including everything that you could know. I'm trying to have a reasonably condensed list that makes sense, and, and that's that. All right, so here we go. We are gonna start jumping through it. It can only take September SAT since August is so full. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's jump into it. So, number one, we've got the slope of a line, okay? <clears throat> this one everybody should know and it's why one so, you know sometimes people say hey it's y2 minus y1 it doesn't matter y1 minus y2 y2 minus y1 it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent right basically what are we doing we're we're subtracting the y values over the it's the difference of the y values over the difference of the x values what i always like to do is i like to stack the coordinates and subtract down so if i was plugging this in it would be 2 minus uh, 2 minus 1 over 7 minus 5 and this would give us a slope of 1 half Okay, so you got to know this formula, very important for the ACT. All right, next, slope-intercept form. I mean, I think you guys know this one is critical, and this is for a linear equation, right? And when you get it into this format, the key is that the Y has to be isolated. Once the Y is isolated, you're in phenomenal shape, and you can quickly see what the slope is of the equation. It's whatever's multiplying the X, and you can see the Y-intercept, whatever that constant is that's out there on its own. All right. All right, number three, another good formula. There are ways around this that if you don't want to memorize this, there's ways around it, but this is a good formula, and it's the midpoint formula. So say we have two coordinates, x1, y1, all right? What are we doing to get the midpoint? We're essentially taking the average of the two x values, right? And we're taking the average of the two y values. That's the midpoint, and that makes sense because it's in the middle, right? The other way to think about this, if you don't want to use the formula, well, wait a minute. If I have 8, 4, 6, 8, okay, we look at these individually. Like So first I'm looking at these two x values right here and here, all right? So if I'm looking at these two uh, x values, I'm looking at the 8 and I'm looking at the 6. What number's in between 8 and 6? 7. What number's in between 4 and 8? 6. So I can also sort of logically deduce that my midpoint is 7, 6, okay? So that's the general idea. All right, next, number 4. Just making sure I can see all the comments here. <clears throat> okay, distance formula is the next one. What is the distance formula in its essence? It is Pythagorean's theorem, which is why I have this little triangle thing right here. Let's Again, let's get this nice pointer up here. So you see, when I'm trying to find the distance between 1, 1 and 5, 3. Oh, okay. Well, actually, sorry. This is in here. It's 1, 2, not 1, 1. But it's the same idea, right? Let's pretend we were trying to find the distance. What do I do? I basically take the difference of the x values and I square it. I take the difference of the y values. I square that. Add those squares and take the square root. But if I'm thinking about this in terms of Pythagorean's theorem, what is the difference of the x's? It's this length. What is the difference of the y's? It's this length, right? So if you can, if you if you do kind of forget this formula, and because it's a little bit complicated, I'm not a huge fan of it. But if you can remember it, great. If you forget it, just you can plot out the points and think, oh, let me make a little triangle. Then it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is the distance. Uh, these formulas would absolutely be helpful for the SAT. This list is longer for the ACT. Because, because uh, the ACT doesn't give you a formula sheet at the beginning, like the, like the SAT. The SAT does. So that's why they're a little different. But absolutely, these are helpful. The order of the Y and X don't matter for slope 
as long as you're consistent, as long as you don't mix and match. But yeah, you put any, just put one coordinate arbitrarily on top, another one on the bottom, and that's fine. Okay. Circumference of a circle, very, very important formula, very straightforward. Two times pi times the radius gives you the circumference, which is the measure of the outside. Or if you have diameter, it's just diameter times pi. I don't put both formulas because I don't want you to be confused. As long as you know that radius is half of the diameter, you're good to go. Even if they give you diameter and this is the formula you're comfortable with, just remember, oh, I got to take half of that diameter, get the radius, then it's 2 pi r. All right, now here's the area of the circle, and this is also why I prefer it in terms of radius because area of a circle also involves radius, and it's literally pi r squared. And you notice what's interesting between this and the circumference formula, it's the same things. It's pi r and a 2. It just happens that in this one, it's r squared, and the other one, the 2's in the front. <clears throat> um, SAT for international students, I mean, you can take it internationally. I think the dates might be there might be less options for dates, but that's it. In terms of harder, being harder to get accepted into American universities and colleges, I honestly can't answer that question because I haven't looked at the data and I haven't really analyzed and tried to figure that out. But theoretically, you should be on equal footing as long as you have solid scores. The other disadvantage might be, depending on where you go to high school, is that American colleges and universities may not have a relationship with your high school or may not be as familiar with how the grades are distributed. So that could be an issue. All right, number seven, length of an arc. Okay, now this is very similar to circumference. It basically is the circumference formula. So if you notice right here, We've got the circumference, 2 pi r, but then we're taking a fraction of it. And what is that fraction? Oh, it's simply the central angle out of 360. What's 360? The entire angle going around for a circle. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because this fraction, this angle out of the whole thing, is equivalent to this piece out of the whole circumference, right? So it's central angle over 360. If this were in radians, it'd be over 2 pi. Central angle over 360 times the circumference. For area of a sector, it's the same, it's essentially the same thing, right? It's the area, pi r squared, and then we're taking a fraction of it, again, the central angle over 360. So both are kind of essentially the same. Next, we come to my favorite formula. Well, one of them. And it is the quadratic formula. And this one is for finding the x-intercepts or zeros of quadratic functions, right? Or, you know, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c or something like that, which makes a parabola. So this helps you find the zeros when your back's against the wall, when you can't factor or do other things. <clears throat> uh, can I, oh, the, all these, you can go to my website, scalarlearning.com if you want these P in PDF form. And you just have to sign up for the, for the mailing list and I believe you should get it. So just sign up for the mailing list on my website and this should come to you. I think you just have to opt in to the ACT. Oh, you know what? Let me just think for a second. I think I have it here. Let me put it in the chat real quick. One second. I think if you go, where is it? Here we go. Okay, I'm putting it from my other account. Okay, so you should be able to see this. Here, check it out. I think if you click on that link that I just posted, uh, it didn't come up yet, hold on. Oh, I think it blocked it or something. Okay, well anyways, if this, hmm, it, I think it did block it. All right, let me do it like this, hold on. All right, uh, um, yeah, I got an idea. I'll put it up here for you guys so you can then download it. Oh, it's just removed the HTTPA. Eh? Okay, let me try it again. Okay, let's see here. Okay, try that. See if that works. Nah, I don't think it's gonna work here. I think I have to do it. I think I have to do it from this account. Oops. Okay, let's try it now.
There you go. Did that come through? When should I take my SAT? I'm heading into junior year, but there are no courses. Um, yeah, see if you can get a private tutor. Um, obviously, I'd be happy to tutor you. If you uh, you know want to reach out, you can email me at josef at scalarlearning.com. But yeah, I mean, and, and that's way better, to be honest. Even if you got less tutoring than the class and you just got, get a really good schedule and start taking practice tests. But you, if you're going to be a rising junior, I mean, you can start later in the year, depending on your baseline and your goals. I would take a diagnostic, see where you're at, see what you want, and then you can sort of figure it out. Um, Ahmed, can you get a 780 to 800 after two months? It depends. It depends on your baseline. You know, where are you at right now? If you're at a 500, I'd say it's going to be probably... Mm, very, very improbable. If you're starting at a 700, yeah, I'd say you can definitely do it. 650, maybe even, but uh, it's a, it's, it's gonna take a lot. You know, it's you're gonna have to go hard for these two months. I had some really good jumps last summer with my, with some of my students when I was running an essay, a uh, pretty big SAT class. I had in two months triple digit jumps. You know, 120, 130, uh, things like that. But you. You know, those were the ones that it's not going to happen to everybody. Those are the ones that were working really hard. Oh, you're already there. Yeah, it's doable. You could do it. You can do it. Okay. Vector addition subtraction uh, on the ACT. Yes, it can. It can come up. Yes. Not on the SAT, but on the ACT. Yes. I haven't included it because it doesn't show up very often, but I would be, I, you can, I, I would, I would do a quick refresh on vectors. Okay, so quadratic formula, again, negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC over 2A. That's the formula. That's your A, that's your B, that's your C. You get it into that standard form, plug and chug, and you're good to go. All right, next. Oops. Let's not go on to the next one. There we go. Number 10, Sokotoa. All right, this is the... This is the ultimate, right? You got to know this for any trig stuff, any trig stuff that's going to be on the ACT. And SOHCAHTOA, right, stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And I kind of marked it here, given that we're dealing with A, sine of A, cosine of A, tangent of A. I sort of color coded it so you can kind of see what it's all about, right? Sine is opposite, which is the blue, over hypotenuse, which is always that long side opposite the right angle. Cosine is adjacent, meaning next to, over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, and that's it. Soka toa. Don't forget that. Law of cosines and sines. I'll put it like this. I can they do get tested occasionally. Usually, not always, but usually they tell you the law of cosines, like they give you the formula. Law of sines less less so, but I wouldn't I wouldn't I c there is a chance I could be wrong, but I wouldn't waste your time trying to memorize the law of cosines because it's a, it's a very complicated formula. And most of the time I've seen that they give you that formula, especially on the real ACT practice test. Law of sines on one of the practice tests I did the other day, I think they didn't give it to you. So you did have to actually know it, but law of sines is pretty easy. I don't have it on this list, but it's super, super simple to, to memorize. Okay. Yeah, and look, if you're fine with memorizing law of cosine, go for it. You know, if, if it's not that complicated for you, but I just feel like there's a lot of moving parts. It's easy to flip a minus and a plus and whatever. So in those cases, you know, my biggest fear is that you guys will 90% remember a formula and forget like one little piece and then it's all for nothing. So I try to reduce the memorization uh, load as much as possible. Number 11, probability. Okay, number uh, basic trig identities show up. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That's pretty much it. Uh, or if you oh, if you consider sine over cosine equals tangent, yes. The, but the very basics, I wouldn't go much beyond those. Uh, I have seen the other variations of sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And when that happens, like, you know, with secant squared and tangent squared. But the thing is, if you know sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, you can derive those other identities just by dividing everything by cosine squared, dividing the everything by sine squared, and you get the other three. Um, okay. So probability is, again, the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. That's it. It's very simple. So, for example, if I'm rolling a dice, okay, and I'm trying to get even numbers, 
My favorable outcomes are what I'm trying to get, how to win, right? So there's three options that give me even out of the total number of outcomes, which is six for a die. So it'd be three out of six is my probability or one half. Uh, Khan Academy is great for SAT, not for ACT. For ACT, I would buy the, the ACT.org practice book and use that. Start there if you haven't. Number 12 is a circle equation, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Very good to know because there's usually one or two questions on this. And if you know the formula, super easy. If you don't, it's difficult. H and k are your center, r is the radius. And I do have a... a um, I do have a, a music video on this if you have trouble remembering the formula, but it's like, uh, I can't even remember the melody, but just search my channel for, you know what, I'll, I'll post it right here so you can see it. Okay. Uh-oh, come on, don't freeze. Circle song. I gotta be careful, my computer crashed yesterday. How can I share this without playing it? I just don't want it to go crazy. But there's the video. Uh, I will pull here, let's hope it doesn't go berserk. Don't crash. Pause. Okay, hopefully that won't be too much of a load on the Wi-Fi and all that processing. I think it's time I get a new computer, to be honest. <laughs> okay, here we go. Do you oh, it didn't pause. Pause, buddy. Okay, there we go. Uh, pr for probability, is it good to know permutation? Uh, it's good to know the what's called the counting principle, which is basically if you have five choices of shirts, three choices of pants, and two choices of socks, to get the total number of options, you multiply all those three numbers. But that's it. It's better to do a lot of practice and learn from my mistakes or go over it. Oh, I think always better to do a lot of practice and learn from your mistakes. These books, the SAT and ACT books, honestly, is like actual textbooks are terrible. I don't think they do a great job. And But you don't need to go through them. You already learned all this material. So you're, it's a refresh. I say 100% power through, um, power through those practice problems and learn from your mistakes. I'm gonna go over a couple of prompts. The ACT Prax book. They're all I've done it on my on my channel already. So all these all these problems have been gone over. Anyway, so there's your circle equation. Let's go to the next one. Exponential growth. Okay. Um, if we're talking about exponential growth, what clickbait? There's no clickbait. Okay. Exponential growth. We have this basic formula where a is my initial value. R is the percentage it's increasing by or decreasing by. So if it's going up by 10%, R is going to be point one, plus 0.1. Um, if it's decreasing by 10%, it's negative, it's minus 0.1. That's why that's the plus or minus. And T is going to be the number of years, right? And that's that exponential growth. All right, next is... A sub n for arithmetic sequence. So what's an arithmetic sequence? This is a sequence that's going up by a set number every time, like five. So an arithmetic sequence could be two, seven, 12, 17, going up by five like that. And this is to find the nth term. Now, is this a super important formula? No, but it does creep up every so often. So if they give you an arithmetic sequence and they say, find the 97th term, you can use this. N, it would be 97. Okay, if the common difference, that's D, in this case, it was going up by five, the common difference would be five. And again, N would be that 97. So you can kind of plug it in on oh, A sub one is that first term of the sequence and that's that. Okay, next geometric sequence. So this is like an arithmetic sequence. Instead of going up by plus something or minus something, it's either timesing or dividing. So, if, and that's that R, that's the common ratio. So for example, an arithmetic could be two, four, eight, 16, 32, that's multiplying by two. Or it could be 100, 50, 25, 12.5, that's multiplying by a half, okay? So that R there would be in ha a one half. And this is the same idea. You can find um, some term with, they say the 100th term, 50th term, whatever. Yeah, they can test this on the SAT too as well. Yeah. 
All right, this is such an important formula. Whoops, sorry about that. Such an important formula. This is having to do with quadratics. This gives you the vertex of a parabola, and it's really nice when it's in standard form. You just put negative b over 2a, boom, you have the x value of the vertex. You want to find the y value of the vertex. You just plug that into the formula, into the equation, and you get your y value. Very, very, very important formula. Please memorize that. 17, this is my conversion to radians. And now, when you're talking about the SAT, they actually have this in the formula sheet. Here they don't, so you got to know it. So you take your angle if you're going from degrees to radians and you multiply it times pi over 180. Why do we know this always works? The way to remember that is because pi and 180, that's your conversion unit, but they are also equal to each other. I gotta place equal values on top of each other. If you wanted to, you could put two pi over 360. That will also work, right? As long as the two values are equivalent. Okay. 18, vertex form for a parabola, all right? Again, standard form is at the bottom. When we put it in vertex form a lot of times by completing the square, you get into this great format, or sometimes they'll give it to you like this, and you can immediately see what the vertex is. It's that h value, and you see how it's minus h, but the, but the vertex is positive h, so that one's always flipped. If there's a minus in there, it's positive, and the k value is just, it is what it is. So there it's k, it's k in the vertex. Again, you don't need to put it into this format to find the vertex, you can use the previous equation, but if it's given to you like this, or you do wanna put it in this format, it's great to, to quickly identify that vertex. The Pythagorean, th Pythagorean theorem, okay, the, the, one of the most famous uh, formulas for finding the different missing sides of a right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and a and b are interchangeable, they're just the legs. Okay. Uh, like your middle point better, like you add them up and divide by two. Oh, what's k? k is, again, just going to be the value for this vertex form. It's going to be the value, of the y value of the vertex. Remember the vertex, right? If I have a parabola kind of going up like this, it's that low point. Or if it's coming down like this, it's the top point, the max or the min. No, y, not y-intercept. It's not the y-intercept. It's the y value of the vertex. Somebody said 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. Okay, we're coming to those. Just hang tight. Number 20, logarithms. This is the basics of logarithms. This is something that's tested much more so on the ACT than the SAT. First, we want to know how to convert between logarithms and exponential equations. They're one and the same, really. And if they say log of A of B equals C, it's the same as A to the C power equals B. So that is an important relationship. And then this is when we're adding logs with the same base, it's like multiplying these two values, so these are equivalent. If we're subtracting with the same base, it's like dividing, okay? Yeah, th literally, this tells you everything you need to know for the ACT in terms of logarithms. That's it. Oh, there's one other rule, actually, sometimes that they'll throw on here where if it's like, if there's a 3 up here, if it's like x raised to the 3, you're allowed to bring that exponent down in front as a coefficient. So I, that does crop up occasionally, but these are the two commonly, uh, these are the three commonly most tested pieces of logarithms. 21, area of a triangle. All right, I, probably most of you guys know this, but just in case you've forgotten it, one half base times height, very simple. And how do I know what the base and height are? I'm just making a, uh, you know, where, they, where they're perpendicular, dropping from the top vertex and making a perpendicular line with that base. But I can do this with any, you know, any vertex. It just happens to be the way that this is oriented. For a right triangle, the two legs are automatically going to be your base and your height because they make a right angle, so that's really nice. An ACT math test is also important. Cylinder volume formula. It's not on my list, but you're right. I agree with you. It is. It is in. I wouldn't say it's like the most important, but it's up there. Uh, and that's that. Okay, special right triangles. Somebody called out special right triangles. And, and by the way, oh, if you do want cylinder, it's the area of a circle, pi r squared, and then it's just times the height. So it's not too complicated. And if you want the volume of a cone, it's that same formula, but times one third. Okay. Special right triangles, you got two of them, 45, 45, 90s, and 30, 60, 90s, right? So we see here with the 45, 45, 90, the nice thing is these, it's an isosceles, so these are going to be equal. And then this third side is just going to be this side times square root of two. For this one, this is kind of an interesting one. Sometimes people have trouble remembering it. Just remember, opposite 30 is the little guy. And we ha and you can say 1x if you want. And notice we have 1, 2, 3. Maybe just not in that order because it's a square root of 3. But the hypotenuse is double the little guy 
and then this medium leg is radical three or square root three times the little guy, and that's it. Okay, is there a way to have this file? Yeah, so I think I posted a link already somewhere up there, and you wanna just use that, and you can sign up for my mailing list, and then you'll get a PDF with, with all of these. Um, let's see. You can also check my Instagram. I posted these formulas all on my Instagram. It might be a little smaller on there, but yeah, if you want the full-size PDF, just sign up for my mailing list. Yeah, yeah, these formulas are definitely good to know. Guys, it was great uh, talking to all of you. This was fun because normally I'm taking these tests and I can't really interact as much. So <coughs> it's fun to kind of see the questions pop up and, and answer them in real time. I hope this was helpful. And if you guys did like the video, please give, give me a like, a thumbs up. That'd be really great. And if you do want to see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. I also have another channel now called Math Puzzles. You can search who's for math puzzles. And it's more just for fun. If you if you enjoy math puzzles and, and working through some uh, fun problems and giving yourself a challenge, I'm going to post one probably later today or tomorrow. Uh, and that's it. And what advice, what do you advise me to take SAT or ACT? Take a practice test of both and see which one you like better. That's my general advice, honestly. Uh, I, I, it, it's different for every student. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, circumference equals diameter. I don't know what that means. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm going to upload a video tomorrow. Well, I'm trying to work on this, the second in the series of SAT math videos of like concepts or critical concepts. It's just taking me a really long time, but I'm going to try and get it done and, and shot and edited tomorrow. So fingers crossed to see what happens there. Thank you guys so much for joining. Best of luck to you all. Honestly, you guys are warriors for taking this tomorrow, especially amidst the time. Uh, the times that we're in and what's happening and yo thank you ahmed uh it's 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 unprecedented times so i wish you the best of luck stay safe stay healthy stay on point stay hydrated have some good snacks healthy food get good sleep and that's it thank you so much and i will see you guys in the next video take it easy